Percy enjoyed working on Thomas's branch line. With the help of Mavis, they pulled trucks to and from the quarry and kept them in order. But with Thomas stationed at Natford, poor Percy found it difficult to run his trains on time. Any spare time he had was spent running Thomas's service on the branch. One morning, Percy was heading to Ellsbridge with his morning train when he saw Sir Topham Head talking with the station master. Oh, uh, hello, sir. It's not often we see you here. Ah, Percy. Just the engine I was looking for. I am, sir? Percy asked. Without a doubt, you're just the sort of engine to help out on the Little Western. The Little Western? Yes, well... With the damaged buffer beam, Jock will be in the works for a while, and will need a replacement. I, I would, sir, but I have enough work as it is on this branch. JJ and Toby can take care of the passengers, and I'll let Mavis go further down the line. I'm sure she'll enjoy that. Well, I'll do my best, sir. Excellent, replied Sir Topham Hatt. I'll arrange your schedule. You'll head to the Little West End tomorrow morning. And with that, Zopmed walked to his car. Next morning, Percy made his way to the Little Western. When he arrived, he saw Oliver and Toad waiting for him. Ah, good to see you made it. Percy smiled. Glad to be here. It's always a pleasure working with you all in the Little Western. You've come at quite a crucial time. With Duck gone, we'll have to do our best to keep up with the timetable. Indeed. My first train is the morning passenger run. The coaches are already at the station for you. Oh. Something the matter? Uh, not, not at all. I, I should be going. Percy pulled into the station. He was met by two peculiar looking coaches awaiting him. Well, hello there. I assume you're Duck's replacement. Why, yes. And you are? Excuse our rudeness. I'm Alice, and behind me is Maribel. Hello there. Just then, the guard blew his whistle. We better get going. Wouldn't want to be late on my first run. With that, Percy left the station. Percy enjoyed the sights of the Little Western. He loved riding along the coast as the sandy breeze hit his fun. Do you think Percy knows what he's doing? I don't know. For our sake, I hope so, she said under her breath. Before long, Percy pulled into Callan Station. The coaches were most pleased. Well done, Percy! You almost pulled as well as Duck. Oh, why, thank you. It's just like pulling Annie and Clarabelle on Thomas's branch. Percy paused. I hope they're doing well. I'm sure they're doing just fine. As if anyone's going to use you, old raggedy coaches. Just Later that night, Percy told Oliver and the twins about his day. Those coaches are a joy to work with, and your line is absolutely stunning. Working here never gets old for me. Sounds like you've had yourself quite the day, laddie. I'm glad you had a good time. You'll help me with the ballast load tomorrow, and then you'll be able to pull your evening train. Okay. Doesn't sound too hard. Hey, you best watch yourself, Percy. The wee ballast trucks don't take too kindly to being bumped, especially from a newbie. Thanks for the heads up, Douglas. I'll be sure to take care tomorrow. Yeah. Best we get some sleep. We all have a long day tomorrow. Next morning, Percy and Oliver shunted together some empty trucks and went to collect ballast. 
The two engines worked hard moving the heavy train of ballast. Despite their best efforts, the truck's tactics had little effect on the engine's stubbornness. Oh, oh, nearly there. Just a little bit longer, oh, Percy. At last, the two scrambled into the lower neck. Right on time. You can lead these trucks into siding up ahead. Just as the engine shunted the trucks into the sidings, the station master came running out from the platform. <sighs> Good. You two are still here. Something the matter, sir? The yard manager just called. They'll need extra ballast for this delivery in order to finish their project in time. So I need one of you to return to Callan and pick up another load. Percy and Oliver exchanged glances. Both engines were still exhausted and were looking forward to taking a break. Oh, don't worry, sir. I'll... I'll do it. Great. I'll let the yard manager know. Thanks, Percy. Why did you... You're far too exhausted to pull another ballast train, Oliver. And since I've been running Thomas's branch, I've gotten used to taking on the extra load. So this won't be an issue. Oliver wasn't sure, but was much too tired to disagree. Well, it's already cleared with the station master, so I guess there's nothing I can do to stop you then. <sighs> Good luck. When he reached Callan, Percy quickly marshaled a line of trucks to get loaded. Chucks were starting to get agitated, as Percy was bumping them hard into each other. As Percy watched them get loaded, he noticed it was almost time for him to pull his evening train. Oh no, the passengers! I must hurry and get the coaches to the platform! With a quick shove, Percy buffered up to the auto coaches. Alice, who had just been woken up, was quite shocked by this. Percy! Whatever is the matter with you? Bumping us that hard? You nearly damaged my buffer- Will you hush? There's no time for complaining, we're going to be late! Before the coaches could even wake up properly, Percy shunted them into the station. As Percy uncoupled, he now realized that he had two different trains awaiting him. Percy pondered for a moment. And then... I got it! I'll just pull the trucks behind the coaches, just like on Thomas's branch. Percy puffed quickly to shunt the trucks, and then marshaled them behind the coaches. Percy, you're getting awfully close to those trucks. Well, how else are you going to get coupled up to them? But we can't! Their load might damage our- I've had it with you two! I know how to operate a branch line. And I don't need two otter coaches telling me what to do. It's Otto, dear. I know what I said! And without another word, Percy started off with a jolt, banging the trucks against each other. Oi, who does this little green caliper that think he is, bumping us around? We'll show him alright, right along the cliffside. Unbeknown to the trucks, Maribel had heard the whole plan and started to get worried. Oh Alice, we have to warn Percy, the trucks are going to throw him off the rails. But Alice was cross. Maybe he needs a good thrashing after the way he spoke to us. But, but if he comes off the rails, it's a good chance we'll follow suit. You make a great point, my dear. Oh, Percy, do listen. The trucks are playing- I thought I said not another word. Listen to me, you insensible engine. The trucks are planning to throw you off the rails. What? Now! The truck surged in Percy as he puffed around the bend. Percy applied his brakes, oh. but the weight of the train laid on his coupling. Percy awaited the impending crash, but... Suddenly, Alice and Maribel's brakes came hard on. Their emergency cable had been pulled by a vigilant passenger. The train came to a stop just at the points. Percy was thankful that they had stopped. As his driver checked on the passengers, he noticed the source of the trouble. Well, that's done it. Maribel's window so her caricatures are completely smashed. We'll have to travel slowly so as to not damage them anymore. Percy was miserable and puffed away slowly. Soon, he came chuffing into Lower Natford, and Percy's driver told the station master about the issue. All right, I just spoke with Sir Top Matt. He wants Percy to head back to Tidmouth Hope with Maribel. Oliver will take his passengers the rest of the way. 
Soon Oliver arrived and got Alice attached to his train ready to go. Maribel got a careful inspection before setting off. Percy was still wondering what Sir Topham Hat would say about this. As they made their way down the line, Percy was the first to speak up. Oh, Mirabel, you okay? Huh. What do you care? I'm sorry. It was wrong of me not to listen to you two. Because of my arrogance, I got damaged in the process. I am sorry. Maribel was shocked. She didn't expect Percy to sound so sincere. I just want to know why you bumped us when all we ever tried to do was help you. I was just so frustrated. It's been non-stop work for me. And I thought I could handle it all, but I can't. If I can't do the work I'm assigned to, then what use am I? Percy, darling, there's only so much work one engine can do. There's no shame in telling Sir Topham Hat that there's too much work for you to do. You'll do a number on yourself at the pace you're going. You're right, Maribel. I'm no use to anyone if I buy myself a ragged. I'll talk to Topham Hat about this dilemma. When they reached the sheds, there stood Sir Topham Hat awaiting for them. <sighs> Percy, I am very disappointed with you. You have caused confusion and delay. Be thankful the passengers were not hurt. Percy was thankful for that. I thought you'd be capable of doing this work seeing how well you handled Thomas Branch line, but I suppose I was wrong. At that moment, Percy spoke up. Sir, I am sorry for the trouble I've caused you. I just wanted you to be able to rely on me, but it was all too much for me. With everything I have to do on Thomas's branch, I've just been burnt out the past few days. I should have declined your offer to work here, but I didn't want you to be disappointed in me. Oh, Percy, I could never be disappointed in you for needing to take a load off your buffers. But I do not like my engines agreeing to do work they know they can't handle. This does put me in quite the predicament. With Mirabel out of action, I'll have to run more passenger services. The goods will start to build up. Sir, if I can handle the goods work honestly, then afterward... I would appreciate it if I could take a break before heading back to the branch. So Topham had thought for a moment. Mm, all right, but no more incidents for you, and don't overwork yourself. Oh y yes, sir. The rest of his time on the Little Western, Percy was kept busy, pushing and pulling trucks for the workmen all day. In mind. As he knew he would get his long-awaited break.